Hello everyone. I will now be discussing the case concerning land reclamation by Singapore in and around the Straits of Johor. To begin, I would like to introduce the parties. First is Malaysia and second is Singapore. The location of this case is in the Strait of Johor. It is a body of water in between Singapore and Malaysia, as you can see in the map. The main issue in this case is the project of reclamation by Singapore. Land reclamation is simply filling up swamps and oceans with sand to make more land available. Since Singapore is a pretty small country, they have been vigorously enlarging their area through reclamation. But there has been a drawback. During this period, Singapore's reclamation works near Johor had been blamed for floods, nearby rivers becoming shallow and smaller hulls for fishermen in the areas, among other things. It is said that since the first reclamation in 1822, Singapore had grown by 25% of its original size. But where did they get the sand for all that? In the 1960s, Singapore used sand from the hills found in the main island, but soon that ran out. Singapore then turned to Malaysia and Indonesia for more sand, which was purchased between 7 to 10 Singaporean dollars per cubic yard. However, it should be noted that 80% of the sand for Singapore's reclamation project came from the Riau archipelago in Indonesia. In the early stages, Malaysia had no reason to worry as the planned reclamations were focused to the south of Singapore. However, since 1980s, Singapore's land started expanding north to the area of the Johor Strait and then the tension started rising. This case revolves around two reclamation program of Singapore. First is in the Palau Tekong reclamation. And second is the Tuas Reclamation. To give you a brief background on the Palau Tekong Reclamation, the Palau Tekong Island was originally composed of two distinct islands, Palau Tekong Besar, the biggest natural offshore island in Singapore, and commonly referred to as just Palau Tekong, and the much smaller Palau Tekong Kesil, situated in the northeastern coast of the mainland, the first reclamation project on the island was carried out in the 1980s. Reclamation work is still ongoing and upon completion, Pulau Tekong Kechil would be totally merged with the larger island. Pulau Tekong has been the home to the Singapore Armed Forces Basic Military Training Center since 1999. In the early 2002, the Pulau Tekong Reclamation Project was disputed by Malaysia, which brought the case to the International Tribunal Court, the case I am currently discussing. To give you a timeline of what happened, in the 1981 to 1985, the first reclamation occurred. In, in 1991, the concept plan was initiated by the Urban Redevelopment Authority or the URA, in 1992, the Parliament approved the reclamation of 657 hectares of the foreshore and seabed of Pulau de Conquichil. In 2000, the Ministry of National Development directed the Housing Development Board and the URA to increase the land to be reclaimed, joining the two parts of Pulau de Kong. This reclamation project garnered objections from Malaysia. From February 2002, Malaysian media reports of local politicians alleges that the harm of the Palau Tekong reclamation work is affecting Johor. Malaysia was concerned that the reclamation might encroach upon Malaysian territories or shift the boundary between Singapore and Malaysia. In addition, Malaysia also raised concerns of the reclamation affecting the shipping lane to the Pasir Gudang port as the shipping lane was now narrower and shallower. 
Other issues include an increase of current flow in the Johor Strait and thus resulting in flooding and affecting the fishermen's catches. Now let us discuss the second reclamation project in Tuas. To give you a background, in the past, Tuas used to be a swamp land in the west of Singapore, which was subsequently cleared to give way for a squatter settlement. Later on, in the 1970s, Residents of Tuas were resettled to public housing areas, which is more commonly known today as Housing Development Board Flats, or the HDB. In the 1980s, as space was limited, land was reclaimed to cater for more industrial development in Tuas. By the year 1988, around 6.5 kilometers square of land were reclaimed to form part of Tuas. Till today, land reclamation is still an ongoing activity in the west of Singapore. Looking at the figures, the land size of Tuas increased from about 17 km square in 1996 to about 30 km square or almost twice its size today. The dispute arose due to Malaysia's point twenty sliver. To illustrate the point 20 slither, consider the map shown. The blue line is the consequence of the point 20, while the red line is the consequence of the point 25, which was agreed upon in, during 1995. Singapore's argument on the point 20 sliver of Malaysia is that it is incompatible with the Point W25 border agreement in the 1995. Point 20 lies at the point that backtracks abruptly northeast of Point 25. Malaysia could not have agreed to Point W25 in 1995 if it had intended to maintain its claim to Point 20. The Point 20 also forms an extremely acute triangle of claimed seabed. It is impossible to construct with any coastal configuration that would generate such an extraordinary feature. The point 20 also caused suspension of works, imposing heavy burden on Singapore, but no benefit whatsoever for Malaysia. Singapore also argues that Malaysia's argument lacks the necessary urgency. Point 20 was reclaimed 23 months prior to the complaint any urgency should have rose when Singapore first began to implement its published plans to reclaim the Tuas View Extension Area. Malaysia's silence then, at the time, raises questions of acquiescence on Estopel. Malaysia, on its part, claimed that the work of Pulau Tekong was damaging Malaysia's beaches, harming its fisheries, and affecting its shipping. Also, Malaysia claims that the reclamation of Tuas violated its territorial waters. Thus creating the case before the International Tribunal of the Law of the Seas. To give you a background of what happened in August of 2003, a meeting was held between representatives from the two governments. Malaysia wanted a negotiating system with Singapore for the purpose of exchanging opinions and information between the two, while Singapore did a complete presentation of the reclamation projects in Tuas and Pulau Tekong and stressed that they were limited within the borders of Singapore's waters. The meeting went well and both countries agreed to a second meeting. Until then, the Malaysian government requested for Singapore to halt the reclamation projects for the time being. However, since Singapore had already shown their findings and stressed that the projects won't negatively impact Malaysia, they declined. Malaysia did not back down and it made another postponement request, especially for the project on Pulau Tekong. But Singapore seemed to have delayed the response to that during which they were found to have performed reclamation operations in Pulau Tekong, which much vigor. After more than a week, Singapore finally responded in the form of a diplomatic note, which reassured Malaysia that Pulau Tekong reclamation projects 
won't interfere with Malaysia's waterway rights, and if it did, the project will be stopped immediately. Two days after receiving the diplomatic note, the Malaysian government filed an application for provisional measures at the International Tribunal for the Laws of the Seas, or the ITLOS Court. The motive behind this was to push the Singaporean government to give them complete information regarding plans to reclaim its territories. Let us summarize the timeline of what happened. At around 1980s, reclamation projects started. By 2002, Malaysia started its protest on Singaporean reclamation projects. In 2003, Malaysia provided Singapore with the details of her technical studies and invoked Article 286 of UNCLOS, initiating an arbitration. But UNCLOS also provides that there should be a negotiation prior to arbitration. Thus, on August 13 and 14 of 2003, meetings were held in Singapore. Days after, Malaysia responded on September 4, 2003, by applying to the ITLOS for provisional measures under Article 290, Paragraph 5 of the UNCLOS. For their arguments before the court, Malaysia argues that the government protests for the reclamation projects are for the following reason. First, the Tuas reclamation breached a point in the country's boundary, and second, the reclamation in Pula Tekong caused destruction to the surrounding marine environment, destroying a jetty and reduced the catch of Malaysian fishermen. As for Singapore, they claimed that the Pulau Tekong reclamation projects won't interfere with Malaysia's waterway rights and if it did, the project will be stopped immediately. That also the reclamation projects are within the Singaporean territory. For the prayer of Malaysia in the provisional measures. The first is that Singapore shall, pending the decision of the arbitral tribunal, suspend all current land reclamation activities in the vicinity of the maritime boundary between the two states or of areas claimed as territorial waters by Malaysia, and specifically around Pulau Tekong and Tuas. Second, to the extent that it has not already done so, provide Malaysia with full information as to the current and projected works, including in particular their proposed extent, their method of construction, the origin and kind of materials used, and designs for coastal protections and remediation, if any. Third, is to afford Malaysia a full opportunity to comment upon the works and their potential impacts having regard, among others, to the information provided. And lastly, to agree to negotiate with Malaysia concerning any remaining unresolved issue. Upon coming up with a decision, the arbitral tribunal decided that, first, Malaysia and Singapore shall cooperate and shall, for this purpose, enter into consultation forthwith in order to establish promptly a group of independent experts with the mandate to conduct a study on terms of reference to be agreed by Malaysia and Singapore to determine within a period not exceeding one year from the date of this order the effects of Singapore's land reclamation and to propose as appropriate measures to deal with any adverse effect of such land reclamation. Also, this group of independent experts is to prepare as soon as possible an interim report on the subject of infilling works in Area D of Pulau Tekong. Also, the Malaysia and Singapore shall cooperate and shall enter into exchange on a regular basis information on and assess risk or effects of Singapore's rec land reclamation work. Also, the two countries must implement the commitments noted in this order and avoid any actions incompatible with their effective implementation and without prejudice their positions on any issue before the Annex 7 Tribunal. 
consult with a view to reaching a prompt agreement on such temporary measures with respect to Area D of Palau Tekong, including suspension or adjustment as may be found necessary to ensure that the infilling operations pending completion the study referred to in the subparagraph A first item with respect to that area do not prejudice Singapore's ability to implement the commitments referred to in paragraphs 85 and 87. Second, that Singapore is not to conduct its land reclamation in ways that might cause irreparable prejudice to the rights of Malaysia or serious harm to the marine environment, taking especially into account the reports of the group of independent experts. Lastly, the eight laws court decided that Malaysia and Singapore shall submit the initial report referred to in Article 95, Paragraph 1 of the Rules, not later than January 9, 2004, to the Itlaws Tribunal and to the Annex 7 Arbitral Tribunal, unless the Arbitral Tribunal decides otherwise. And lastly, that each party shall bear its own cost. As a result of that decision, the parties have come to an agreement on the following. First is the creation and establishment of powers of the group of experts or the GOE. Second is that the parties have considered and reviewed the GOE's final report and accepted its recommendations. And lastly is that the parties' amicable settlement of the dispute terminates the case. As part of the agreement, the first recommendation of the GOE or the group of experts is that Singapore shall modify the final design of the shoreline of its land reclamation at Area D at Palau Tekong to incorporate a bite and a nose as recommended by the GOE's final report and as reflected and finalized in the chart at Annex 1. Second is that Singapore shall carry out maintenance dredging as is necessary to ensure that the depth of the dredged area of the bite is kept at minus 12 meters chart datum. Third is that Singapore shall streamline Changi finger in line with the recommendations of the GOE, either by a temporary or permanent structure, prior to the completion of the reclamation of the southwestern bank of Area D of Palau Tekong. Fourth is that Singapore intends to replace the existing sheet pile silt curtains on the eastern side of Area D in Pulau Tekong with the final revetment protection as soon as is practicable and in any case within not more than 70 months subject to the availability of resources for this purpose. Fifth is that Singapore undertakes to pay the full cost of scour protection works at Tanjung Bilong Core Jetty which the parties have agreed um, amounts to. Lastly, a lump sum of 374,400 Malaysian ringgit, which is based on a sum of 5,200 Malaysian ringgit per fisherman, shall be paid by Singapore to Malaysia to be distributed by Malaysia to its fishermen as full compensation for losses as a result of the reclamation works. Let us move on to the recommendation B of the GOE. Recommendation B of the GOE provides that Singapore must reassure Malaysia that even after the Pulau Tekong reclamation, the safe and smooth passage of ships through Kuala Johor and Katdel Harbour will not be adversely affected by the said reclamation. And lastly, for recommendation C of the GOE, the parties agreed to expand the terms of reference of the Malaysia-Singapore Joint Committee on Environment, or MSJCE, to include the following. First is to exchange information on and discuss matters affecting the respective environments in the Strait of Johor. And second is to undertake monitoring activities in relation to their respective environments in the Strait of Johor and address any adverse impacts if necessary. These monitoring activities shall include first, monitoring water quality to protect marine and the estuarine environment, and second is to monitoring ecology and morphology. To summarize, 
Singapore was allowed to continue its reclamation works, but this time under plenty of conditions. One of the conditions was the setting up of a group of independent experts to undergo research and determine the effects of Singapore's reclamation project, especially on Pulau Tekong, and suggest that appropriate actions to mitigate said effects. Among the results of the study show that reclamation activities in Tuas and Pulau Tekong did have several impacts on the study area, but no major impacts were recorded. However, land erosion was confirmed to have happened at Johor's Pularek and Belungkor Jetis. Following that, on the 10th of January 2005, the judges ruled that the Singaporean government has to change the final design of the shoreline on Pulau Tekong and Changi. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.